to a voice of one crying out. This is Craig. Today we are going to be talking about the continuation of what is revival and why do we want it. I would like to say that Jesus came to set us free from all the corruption, from the bondage, from the curse, and all the things that came with us. That is the ultimate reason he came. But while he was here doing his earthly ministry, he was not God. And what I mean by that is that he gave up the divinity, the, the aspects of being God that made him uh, invulnerable. So you can't have a redeemer of mankind that isn't a man. That's why he had to come as a man. Because in order to have a perfect sacrifice, the thing that, that needed payment for it must be provided to as the same or equal value. And lambs, goats, bulls, they're not the same or equal value in, the sa in, in our system. God set up a kinsman redeemer uh, protocol in scripture where the closest relative related to the person that was sold into slavery, losing land, needing to sell property. They're the ones that could redeem the person and buy their freedom or buy their property so that it remains in the household or the, the relation of the person who had lost it or come into oppression, those, those types of things. So when you have Jesus coming and operating, he operated as a man with the Holy Spirit. He was righteous because he, he wasn't born into sin. His father was God, not man. So he didn't have the taintedness going into him, which is why he could be tempted by Satan in the wilderness. And if he had chose to go one of those routes, there would be no hope because he was our only hope. He is our only hope. But he showed us how we can live the life we were meant to live from the beginning with the Spirit of God. So God breathed his breath into man and brought life then we were supposed to go and do all the things that God wanted in the earth with that spirit. Now, Jesus did that very thing. He had the spirit of God come upon him and remain with him until he was on the cross. And the father had to forsake him because he had become a curse. And the Holy Spirit can't stay upon a curse. But because he did not deserve to die, he was filled again. God breathed the breath of his spirit, the, the breath of life back into him and restored him from death. This is, this is revival, being brought back to life, bring, being brought back and restored unto the things that God has promised mankind and told us that he would do in our lives. See, revival is not about uh, angel feathers, gold dust, feelings inside of, of happiness and excitement and, and all those things. They can accompany revival, but if you're focused on those things, if you're focused on just experiencing the power of God and walking away and remaining the same, you've already lost sight of what God created revival to be. In Judges, we see the, the children of Israel walking with God, then falling away from God, serving mammon, serving other gods, doing what they consider right in their own eyes, having lewd relationships. Whatever the case may be, it, it was mainly the same in generations, but it was different in some. And 
They'd become oppressed. Their wealth would fail. Their crops would not grow. They would go into famine. They would go into drought. They would have plague come upon them. And their neighboring commu- the neighboring nations would come against them and oppress them and require even more out of them until they were like, what did we do wrong? We must have walked away from God. And they say, God, deliver us. And he hears their cry. And he sends people like Samson and Deborah and Gideon and other men of God to, to set them free from their oppressors. Preach repentance and cause them to be drawn back. Drawn back to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To to follow and worship him and to do things right and to seek his justice, which is taking care of the poor, looking after the widow, the orphan, going to people that, that are hurting and bringing things that they need. In, in our case, it's often money and healing. We, we don't live in a uh, bond servant society, though you could argue if if you have debt, you're a bond servant. You're working to pay somebody else back. Regardless, God sends revival through men and women, but men in general, humankind. He sends people who will work on his behalf to bring deliverance, healing, good news, And to cause people to turn their hearts back to the Father. Turn their hearts back to God. Turn their mind and their attention and their focus back to God and His kingdom. Revival cannot come without repentance. Revival cannot come without man. And when I say without man... It has to have people doing the work. The laborers must go into the vineyard. We must go. Revival is then a couple of things. It is God calling forth man and sending him out as a representative to be, to do, to will according to his will and what he wants done in the earth. We see his promises that that the Isaiah 60 and 61 where where Yeshua, Jesus reads in the, the synagogue, I have been anointed to do the following things, to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the sick, to make the lame to walk, the blind to see, the mute to speak, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the year of Jubilee, the year where oppression ceases, where everything that has been taken from you, everything that that caused you to go into slavery gets restored. These are the things of revival. You, You see deliverance. You see God's faithfulness. You see Him coming through in your life, for your life. But you see it happening through men and women of God, through children of God that that get the message, that understand what he wants, what he desires, and say, Hineni, I will go for you. Here I am. I will go. Send me. We're not going into the how yet, but but that's, that's a key point of how. So the why is... We're in bondage. We're in oppression. We want to see the justice of God come into the earth. And it does not come any other way except through men who are anointed of God to do the will of God and bring his revival into the earth. There is an awakening and a revival that must come. An awakening for those who have never been born again. An awakening for those who have never heard the truth of the word of God. And a revival for those who have experienced some of the goodness, or even all of the goodness, but fell away or or saw those things dwindle in their life. So revival is man going forth, repentance, and God's power showing up. It's It's not all hype. It's not all, you know, glorious, and it doesn't always look good. 
It's not what everyone wants. But I can tell you it's what God wants. It's what I want. And it's what I want for your life. It's what I want to see every believer and everyone in the earth needs to experience, needs to have the opportunity to meet God through his messengers, through his ambassadors, those who he sent to preach the kingdom of God is at hand and and see the glory of God come into their life and begin to change and reverse the curse that has been put upon them, to break off the works of darkness, to break off oppression, to heal them and set them free from all the works of the devil. God is so good that this is his desire. Every generation, you see in Judges, every generation had this opportunity to turn and seek God. Then experience deliverance and repent and begin to follow him and walk after him and if the next generation fell away towards the end of the life of that generation he would send another deliverer he would send another messenger to bring about his goodness in the earth and in in the history of america you have the the revival of the 1770s with uh john uh wait it's not john evans I, I, I cross names, uh, Evan Roberts and John Edwards. Uh, Evan Roberts was early 1900s and late 1800s in, in Britain. But with John Edwards preaching things like sinners in the hands of, the angry, uh, of an angry God and, and the people listening to him, this, this guy would literally read his, his sermon, monotone practically. No... No excitement like I typically have. He would read this sermon. And while he's reading, people would go into an open vision in in the whole of the, the sanctuary. And they'd be climbing on top of their chairs and climbing up the pillars because they see below them the the gates of hell opened up and they can see into hell and the torture that's going on and the struggle that that people are having to face that did not accept the Lord. And they repented and they turned to God and it brought about a revolution. It brought about an awakening throughout the Americas where it wasn't just the Quakers and the Puritans that came across to to establish a a Israel-type nation, but, but it was multitudes of people that turned their hearts to God. And we have this every generation. We we have uh the camp meetings in North Carolina, I don't remember what they're called at the time. I'll look them up and put them in the video. Um, you have the the revival in, in 1904 at Azusa Street. You have the, the healing crusades in the 1950s. You have the Jesus movement in the 1970s. And and you had Smithton and and Pensacola, the Brownsville revival. And you have the Toronto blessing and and things like that. It is time for the next generation, for this generation to begin to experience the power and the presence of God. But it's not going to be an isolated revival. It's not going to be just here or there. It is going to be one that spreads across the face of the earth because the people of God have learned that, that it is the Spirit of God that raised Christ Jesus, that lives inside of them. A spirit that raises somebody from the dead is the spirit of revival. And he is with you, and he is in you, and he will carry you to the nations. He will carry you to your community, and he will cause revival to be in and through your life. Father, I ask that that you would impress this upon the listeners impress this upon those that are hearing the sound of my voice, that revival is of God. It is what you desire. It is what you want in the earth. And it shall come. Won't always look great or pretty, but it will set people free. 
It will restore life. It will restore hope. It will restore people unto right relationship with God, causing the the hearts of the fathers to turn to the sons, the sons to the father. And on on a deeper note, it will turn the heart of the father loose upon the sons of men. And the sons of men, their hearts will be turned back to our Father in heaven. God bless you. Thank you for for watching. And I hope this impacts you. I will get to work on doing the how because without the how, All this is, is an inspiring, encouraging message. But we must be the hands and feet of God. We must know how to be the hands and feet of God. It's not just, you know, you go out and you start talking to people about Jesus, though that's part of it. You you need to know the strategies of God and understand the way He operates, the way He moves, and the way we must operate and cooperate with him to see the world set ablaze for the glory of God. God bless you.